like me, who can only envision its beauty from their parents' fond memories. We are all here for the same goal, for the removal of the Eritrean president, Isias Afurgi, and to bring about democratic change in Eritrea, beginning with our first democratic election. Hopefully our voices can be heard and our goals can be achieved. Although we may all come from different backgrounds, whatever race, religion, color or creed, we are all humans and our empathy for one another transcends our differences. We do not anger you that your own blood, your, your compatriot, is prosecuting you worse than our previous foreign occupiers. If you fought for 30 years to liberate your country, in times of peace, you should feel more secure, not more afraid, shouldn't you? Would it not be painful to hear that your country was better off when it was occupied by a foreign nation than by its own people? And it is your own people saying that. This anger at the current Eritrean government is universal among all Eritreans. And I would like to highlight some of the atrocities that the Eritrean president, Isias Afurki, has committed and how now, more than ever, is the best time to remove this dictator as the current youth uprising in North Africa and the Middle East has shown us enough is enough. 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 We, that, we that Eritrean Australian youth are blessed with ample opportunities and liberties by the Australian democratic system. First and foremost, the right to voice our opinion on any issue without fear for our own safety. In Eritrea, to voice your opinion on any issue that can be linked to the government is extremely dangerous and is an offence which carries an indefinite jail sentence with no trial, with no visitation rights, basically to banish. This brings into mind the story of Dawood Isaac. Some of, you may have heard, read, some of you may have already heard of him. He is a Swedish Eritrean journalist who is currently held in Eritrean prison and has been there for the last decade without trial. He seeked asylum in Sweden during the war and he returned back home once the war ended and began working as a reporter. He was sent to prison for demanding democratic reforms in a series of letters to Isias. And for the last 10 years, he has been tortured for only voicing his opinion. A number of agencies and organizations have voiced their concerns about Mr. Isias and have urged the Swedish government to pressure the Eritrean government to release Dawood, which has been to no avail. When the issue of Dawood was raised during Isias on Swedish TV, he said, and I quote, we will not have any trial. We will not have. We will not free him. We know how to handle his kind. At the moment, Mr. Siak is still in prison, and the Swedish government is still pleading for his release. How can we sit idly by while our citizens are being prosecuted for voicing their opinion? How can we continue to have this dictator represent Eritreans all over the world? It is time for his reign to end. Australia provides us with the opportunity to dictate our own future as Eritrean youth. We can choose to learn a trade, to go to university, or just join the workforce. In Eritrea, the Eritrean students don't have this right. Students completing their final years of study, 11 and 12, are not, are not given exit permits. And if they choose to drop out of high school, they are forced into indefinite military service. As reported by the Eritrean news website Asana, Asana.com, they had interviewed the former director of high schools in Asmara, Mr. Mr. Mugistiab, and he was discussing how the school system works in the final years. In year 12, all Eritrean students are sent to Sawa High School, Mil high school Military Camp. And they're, and they're being exploited as cheap labor, and in the end, they are sent to military service for the mandatory one and a half years. They say it's mandatory one and a half years, but the majority of them know that this service is indefinite. Most of them will not leave. This is, this is how real life starts for them, and most likely this is how real life will end for them. The school system was implemented in 2003. Previously, you'd, uh, you'd complete your final years at the school you actually started with, but now it has become the final years we actually do at Sawa Military School. They do it specifically in that place, so there's no chance for you to escape. So, you can, so the military service will automatically be implemented. Thousands of students every year are killed by attempting to escape because it is the only way for them to live free life, free life, and to live a life that they want, not the life that the regime dictates. 
when the dictatorship is toppled, hopefully our youth can breathe easy and decide their own future. Hopefully the points I have mentioned allow, allow all of you to understand the plight of all the Eritreans living back home and realize, realize we live in a democratic nation, so we should speak for those that can't. The Eritrean people have no voice. There is not a single foreign correspondent in Eritrea because they know it's not safe for them. All news media is controlled by the government and the citizens are afraid to voice their opinions to their closest friends due to the fear of spies listening in and reporting back to the government. We are all, we are, we are their voice. I know they pray and wish to be rid of the dictator and hopefully this protest will bear fruit. And they will say that the Eritrean regime has been ousted and it all began with the universal protest by the Eritrean diaspora. Thank you.